Hi and welcome back everyone. In this video I'll show you how to build the front end for this beautiful NFT marketplace. If you're new on here, hey, I'm Robert and in this YouTube series I'll show you how to build a full stack NFT marketplace with or without lazy minting. If you haven't seen the live demo in the first video, please do so now before watching this content. If you like this content, please give me a thumbs up below and subscribe to this channel. Now let's do it! Alright, I'm running Visual Studio Code, where we will write the whole front-end code. If you're running Ubuntu on Windows like I do, please make sure that you've created your development directory on the Linux file system for performance reasons. Now we can check if Node is installed. We do this by running Node-V or npm-v, which returns the version number. If it's not installed, then please install it or follow the links in the description. Now we can create a new Next.js app by running npx create next app NFT marketplace. This creates a new directory, NFT Marketplace, and we change into this directory. In the Explorer on the left side, we can now see that the directory was created. It contains a pages directory, and within this pages directory, there is the index.js file, which is the homepage. We open this file, and we delete its whole content. Here we can create the first version of our home page. We type const home and we will return just the headline for now. NFT marketplace with lazy minting. In order to display it in the browser, we also have to export it. Now we can run npm run dev in the terminal, which will spin up a web server and then we can display the result in the browser. Next.js creates a new site for us with the address localhost port number 3000. But we want to have a complete layout with a navigation and a footer. So we create a new directory in the NFT marketplace named components. New folder. Components. And within this components directory, we create a new file named navbar.js. Now we copy the content of the index.js file into this navbar.js and change the name of this function to navbar. And the headline we change to navbar as well. Now we create another component and we name it footer.js. In this footer.js component, we do the same like we did in the index.js file and in the navbar.js file before. We name the function footer, we export it, and we write the headline my footer. In the same way, we create the layout component, but in this component, we add the two components we created before by typing navbar then tab this creates the import statement in the first line and then we close this tag here 
The same we do with the footer. Footer, tab. Again, we close this element here. Between the navbar and the footer, we want to output content like the one we created in the index.js file. We can do this by outputting the variable children here. But in order to have this children variable available in our component, we have to pass it as a function parameter here. In order to pass this children parameter to a layout component, we open the underscore app.js file in the pages directory. Here we have to wrap our layout component around, around this default component. We do this as follows. Now we can switch to our browser window again. And as expected, we see here our navbar followed by the content from the index.js file, followed by our footer component. Here you can see that I've created three more pages yet. The My NFTs page, the About page, and the Create and Sell page. Now I go back to our navbar component and I add a navigation for these pages. In the first line, I've imported the link, the Next.js link library. Here I have created a navigation object, uh, which is a JSON array with entries for each page, home, my NFTs, create, and about. Now I can output the links to these pages in the return function. Now we can switch back to a browser window, and here we can see that we have a working navigation. We can click on My NFTs, on Create, About, and on Home again, and we can see that these pages are loaded without additional round trip to the server. Now it's time to pimp up our UI a little bit, and for this purpose we use Tailwind. We install Tailwind with this command into our project. Then we create a tailwind config file with this command. Then we open the tailwind config.js file and we update the content entry as follows. Now we need to update the globals.css file in the styles directory. We delete everything in here and replace it with this content. Now I install two more libraries which I'm using. This is Padlet UI. and hero icons. I also installed the auto print pixel module. Now I go back to my navbar.js component and here I add some Tailwind styling. I'm importing these modules that I've previously installed and I'm doing a lot of additional styling here. I'm using the Next.js router for highlighting the active pages in the navigation. And I've added a logo to the right side of the navigation. Now I open the browser again and see my new navigation. If I click on my NFTs, you can see that the page changes here. Create, about, home. 
and my logo is here on the right side. Right before the logo, we want to output the Ethereum address of the connected user. We do so by creating a new component named connection and an, another new component named NFT arrow, which will display an error message uh, when the user is not connected. In the connection component, we store the account, the address, the serum address in a state variable. For now, we use a dummy address, which we will change later. Here you can see that I'm outputting just a small piece of the address and not the whole address. Now we go back to our navbar component and insert the new connection component before the logo. We open the browser window again and we can see that the Ethereum address is displayed here. Next, we create a headline.js component, which takes the title and the subtitle as arguments. And here we create a link to our create and sell page. Now we can update our index.js page with the headline component and we pass the title and the subtitle, which we define here. If we look back to a browser window, we see our new headline here. If we change the size of the window, it adapts perfectly. Now we add this new headline to our other pages as well, to my NFTs, about GS, create and sell .gs. Again, we check the results in the browser window. Home, my NFTs, create and about. In order to display our NFTs on the home page and on the my NFTs page, we create a new component named nfts.gs. This component takes load signer items only as argument. If it is set to true, then we will display just the NFTs of the current user. If it is set to false, we will display all NFTs. Since we have no connection to the blockchain and the database yet in this video, we create a temporary JSON array in this JSON array named NFT items, we define uh, relevant fields of our NFT, like token ID, the name, the image path, the price, the owner address, if it is listed for sale or not, if the NFT is owned by the signer or not, if the NFT has a valid sales order or not. We do this for two NFTs one and two and here we create several functions for error handling for updating the state for selling the nft for delisting the nft from sale for buying the nft for buying the nft from a sales order which is lazy minting for deleting a sales order. And finally, we output the NFTs. Now we go back to our index.js page. And here we define the load signer items only. We set it to false because on the home page we want to load all NFTs. In the return statement, we add our new component NFTs and we pass 
load signer items only as argument. We do the same on the My NFTs page, but here we set the load signer items only to true because we want to just display the NFTs of the current user. Now we can switch back to our browser window and here we can see our NFTs on the home page and on the My NFTs page as well. Now we create a create and sell component which we will use on the create and sell page later. In this create and sell component, we define the fields for the name of the NFT, for the description of the NFT, for the price of the NFT, Also for the order type, if we want to mint with ARP 712 or if we want to mint directly on the blockchain. Here we can choose the collection to which this uh, NFT belongs. Here we can upload a file, we have a file upload component. And finally, we have a button for creating and selling the NFT. Now we go to our create and sell page, which is different from the create and sell component. And on the create and sell page, we replace this header with our new create and sell component. If we open our browser window again, we can now click on our create and sell your NFT button. This opens our create and sell page with our create and sell component. We can enter a name here, we can enter a description, we can enter a price, the order type if we want to mint with ARP 712, lazy minting, or if we want to mint directly on the blockchain. We can choose the collection here, we can upload the image of the NFT, and finally we can click on the create and sell button. If you're interested to learn how to connect this front end to the blockchain and to the database, then please subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching.